Greetings, Greenhouse people. I'm your host, Bill Calkins with Ball Tech On Demand. And on the agenda today is a topic that's pretty cutting edge and not necessarily because it's brand new in the world of horticulture, but due to the fact that this type of production is expanding and becoming critical to more and more growers uh, all across North America. And I'm talking about tissue culture. And like you, I'm excited to hear more about this from our guests today, both of whom have tremendous knowledge to share from research and application perspectives. Specifically, they're discussing tissue culture acclimation and the key components to success in ornamental plant production. Joining me today is Deanna Felton, longtime propagation and production manager from Sunbelt Greenhouses in Georgia, and Dr. Nathan Jonke, the culture research manager at Ball Horticultural Company in Chicago. And I know you guys have a lot to say on this topic, so let's get started. All right, so the next few slides here, we're gonna talk about the crops that you might be working with. And I put these in a scale of difficulty. And the reason for that is if you have different levels of experience with tissue culture, you might wanna start with something a little bit easier. Or if you have a lot of experience, you might want something that's a little bit more interesting to diversify your product offering. And so a lot of those generally fall into a higher level of difficulty. And how we came up with these is a combination of uniformity that we've seen from labs, uh, the success rate that we're seeing in the greenhouse from multiple different uh, rooter, rooting stations, crop time and also the reliability of those labs and that specific crop from those labs. So on the low difficulty, there's not a lot here. Wanted to keep this pretty simple. Um, so we've got ferns, which come in an auger plug, and these are almost pre-acclimated already once, they're, once they get to you. And so that means they're going to be a lot more tolerant of variable conditions, warmer temperatures, lower humidity. And the crop time is a little bit longer, but relatively easy to grow. Uh, Rex begonias um, are relatively easy. Uh, they may have a little bit of breakdown or they might not have a lot of roots, but generally if you can manage light and humidity from the get-go, these are going to be pretty successful. They also come in a large variety of colors, so there's a lot of options to pick from. Um, Heuchera is sort of your gateway into the perennial TC market. Lots of different colors. There is a little bit more variability, say, compared to a fern, um, but a lot of options here, and they generally acclimate really well. Uh, how about Gerbras? You guys have a good amount of experience with Gerbras in uh, Sunbelt. Yes, we do. We do a lot of the uh, Garvinia type, and they are relatively easy to, what I consider easy to do, um, about a six-week crop time, just like a, a Gerber from seed. So it's just the key to it is the humidity and the acclimation. And then hostas as well. You can find a good number of hostas from tissue culture. Uh, that's a good option to avoid some diseases that you might see in bare root production. So when we go over to moderate difficulty, we start getting a few different species and a lot of different tropicals in here as well. Um, and take us through some of these crops and what they might see that makes them a little bit more difficult uh, than say our easy category. Okay, the allocation. Um, the amount of leaves that you receive does make this a little bit more difficult. We prefer that we have at least two leaves and a shoot. And you can see in the picture that Nathan's showing right there that um, some of those only have one leaf. So that makes that a little bit more difficult to actually root that plant and get it going. The um, calatheas are slower and smaller. And I would, you would need at least, my recommendation for all these plants is you need at least two, sh two leaves and a shoot to be successful with it. Otherwise, it's going to take a very, very long crop time. Um, Defenbachia is another one. Um, it can come in um, kind of on the smaller side and um, it's a little bit, it's slower to grow. 
Nathan, uh, you're the expert on echinacea. Yeah, we've done a lot of echinacea here at Ball, obviously one of Darwin's uh, key products. And uh, this one is definitely not on the easy list. There's There can be a good amount of variability between labs as well as within flasks. And you can see that on the right-hand side here on the bottom photo, a very small compared to um, very large. And in this one, you definitely want roots to be present. It doesn't make or break the crop if it doesn't have roots, but you're definitely gonna have a lot higher success rate when you have roots. Uh, the other challenging thing can be the length of the roots. And that goes for almost all tissue culture. If you get something that has really long roots or really thick roots, that's gonna be a challenge to stick. Um, so when you're talking back to your labs, push them for shorter, more actively growing roots, and that'll help your success rate. Uh, but with echinacea, go for that larger size and stick with roots. Um, Monstera, we've seen to be relatively easy, right? Um, yes. But there can be some variability there. Uh, philodendrons are another one that can be easy or can be a lot uh, slower and a little bit more difficult to do. Um, the size of the um, plantlet really matters. You want that that plantlet to be at least to the edge of your, uh, we use alleys, at least to the edge. If it's smaller than that, it dramatically increases your crop time. And then syngoniums, you really need to pay attention to uh, what you're receiving out of the bag. If you've got vitrified cuttings, uh, I mean, plantlets, you could be actually have a problem coming into you and not realize it. So you need to pay attention to the quality of what is coming out of your bag. Yeah, if something's breaking down in the bag, and we'll go over this uh, in the future, it's likely do not stick that and, and report that back to the lab that either something happened in Trazent or they have a pathogen. Like we've uh, isolated fusarium on Syngonium quite frequently. And so that's something you want to make sure that the lab is providing clean uh, products. And the syngonium is another one you want to make sure that you have enough leaf. Oh. So here's our high difficulty category. So we get some more interesting crops in in this category. And this is an exhaustive list, exhaustive list, but um, it's a, a list that we've worked with a good number of crops together. And, and so that's why we, we have these on here. Aglaonema, long, long, long crop time. If the spec isn't right on this, what we say, like over 20 weeks sometime to fill out a yes. line? Yeah, yeah. 20, some of it 28 weeks if you don't have the right spec. Yeah. And so that's one when we've worked with the labs, we've been able to get them to provide a younger, more actively growing um, spec, but also something that doesn't have a lot of callus on the bottom or large roots. And those have finished much faster and our success rate has gone been a lot higher. Um, talk to us about these smaller and more interesting alocasias. I have one over in my office right over here that looks awesome. So the smaller alocasias, um, if you do not have the two leaves and a shoot, the crop time increases tenfold. So the, the, what your lab is sending in to you on the size of your TC really affects this crop. Then there's the ficus tenecki. Uh, this is one where we've been able to move over to a, a single stem form. Uh, you can see that clump in the bottom here. And also to the right, you see a clump growing out, but then there's a single form. While uh, some customers might want a, a clump form because you have more stems in a liner that'll fill out. Um, I mean, we, we said earlier, usually one shoot is gonna become dominant in that clump. And the single uh, form roots better, is more uniform coming out of the flask. And then when we get this clump form, you know, the lab's pushing that with hormones in order to get all those shoots to develop and sometimes will get excessive shoot number and then it doesn't root well. It, it doesn't look like a good quality line or going out the door that's gonna fill out the pot. Um, how about our, our favorite ficus lyrata? We haven't had <laughs> any challenges with that. The biggest challenge with that crop is actually edema. Um, it roots relatively easily. Um, 
and that, that is another one that can come in clump form and single shoot. We prefer the single shoot. It roots just like the other, um, the Teneki much better. You can have, like Nathan was saying, uh, in the clump form, sometimes we've seen as many as 10 shoots. So it's very, it makes it very difficult to root. It makes your trays very uneven. It makes your growing more difficult because of the um, unevenness within the tray. And you end up having to grade it more. So the Lorada, uh, if you don't have the proper environment for it, you can end up with this um, edema seen in the picture. Yep. Yeah, we've had to, we worked hard on getting that fine tuned. And so that's another thing to keep in mind. And we'll talk about later in acclimation is the season that you're doing this in can change your environment drastically. And when coming out of tissue culture or working with specific crops, you need to be attuned to how your environment is going to change. Um, when we talk about single stem philodendrons, again, some of these can be pretty easy, but what we've seen is that uh, with the lab pushing for more shoots to get more division, to have more plantlets to sell, uh, we can run into plantlets that we stick and then grow multiple shoots of. And specifically with the single stem type philodendrons, uh, if you ship off a flat that has multiple stems in a liner, that could get rejected because the form that this is supposed to grow into is a single stem. Um, also, we have pictured here is Prince of Orange, uh, which is more of that yellow, more orangey colored type, which people really like. Uh, but these can be sensitive to high light intensity and high night temperatures, and you'll get some bleaching of the leaves in that one. Also, Moonlight. Uh, we've seen some reversion with Birkin, a variety of philodendron. And so be on the lookout when you start getting these highly variegated or very different colors in this crops, you can get some reversion back to, or multiple off types. And so keep in touch with your lab, tell them you're seeing a percentage in your flats and they might need to go back and reinitiate uh, this variety so that you're getting a more consistent crop coming out of the flask. Mm -hmm.